Thanks for getting on to the 18th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Going to be talking about some thoughts regarding the upcoming winter season. Many people, of course, wanting my thoughts um, with regards to whether it's going to be a winter that uh, we could look back on and go, wow, that was an exciting one. That was below normal and we had plenty of snow. Or is it going to be another winter similar to last year where there was a tease to start with and then we just seen the polar vortex ramp up and, uh, you know, bye bye winter. It's a very good question. Uh, and it is something that I am struggling with. Uh, if I'm being truthful with you, the global sea surface temperatures uh, back in the, this day in 2007 looked like this here. So this day back in 2007 we did have a, a la nina in place as you can see uh, we had a very different look back then uh, with a, a significantly cold pdo versus what we are seeing at this minute in time this of course is um as of the 24th of october and you notice the warmth that we're seeing across much of the the ocean basins at this moment in time and this is where the problem lies because of course we've seen a uh, year to date an exceptionally warm europe and other parts of the world as well and i believe that the strong warmth over the north pacific north atlantic is driving the global temperature of course more so than just simply putting it down to carbon dioxide so therefore of course with a very warm front running nine and a half nine three quarter months of 2022 why would we see a change uh, to uh, anything significantly colder um of course i do believe that the tropics are the main driver in uh, you know the the atmosphere around the, the planet i think what goes on within the tropics dictates what type of upper earth pattern we're going to see uh, at any given time and further down the road and i do believe that the, this extreme uh, warm pool to the south of the aleutians we've got of course the uh, la nina that's ongoing over the the equatorial pacific we've got warming surrounding indonesia we've got the cooling over the western portion of the indian ocean and of course that is driving a negative uh, iod which in turn, in, in basic terms, would actually favour uh, colder weather across the, the, the UK. Uh, every La Nina is different as well, whether it be the cold focused over the central portion of the basin versus the eastern portion of the basin. We have a very, very warm North Atlantic. And, you know, you could the assumption could be that we see a stronger than normal polar vortex. And if that is the case, folks, we will see one of the warmest winters on record because you drive, um, you know, systems over this warm water. We're going to see wet conditions. We're going to see warm conditions and, and whatnot. If only it was as simple as that. I do think that the Pacific is going to drive our winter this year. And by that, I mean, we are going to see with the, the, the extreme warmth versus the, the, the cold against the, the, you know, the, the South American continent extending towards Indonesia. This is going to dictate the type of atmosphere. This is going to distort the, the upper earth pattern. The Man Julian oscillation is going to be hard to pinpoint. MGO, by the way. MJO could be the um, saving grace in a sense to this winter. It could be in a favourable position that, uh, for example, allows the polar stratosphere to weaken significantly, may even cause a sudden stratospheric warming, for example, and therefore we could have all sorts of fun games. But nothing is simple, and when you've got uh, an overall warming ocean, warming atmosphere, it is becoming harder to look at certain elements, certain aspects in forecast. And last year looked on the face of it like a great year for cold conditions across the UK. And, and we've seen the opposite taking place. So I'm being very, very cautious when it comes to forecasting 
this upcoming winter season and I'm not necessarily jumping on the cold uh, scenario, I'm afraid here. Um, I would like to, but I do not want to be biased towards any given uh, you know, uh, outcome, if you will, with regards to winter. At this moment in time, I do believe that a warmer than normal winter is likely, uh, but that doesn't mean that we won't get uh, some spells of, of winter and cold. Uh, last year was pretty much a write-off. We had the run-up to Christmas. It was so close, but yet so far. And, of course, all it takes is you to get a stronger than normal Azores high that kind of lingers just a wee bit too close to the British Isles and keeps the cold over the continent. And that is exactly what happened back in the run-up to Christmas. December last year was a teaser. It was basically showing us what we could have had but didn't. And um, that is my, my, my fear here. Now, this very warm waters to the east of Canada and surrounding Newfoundland, uh, off uh, New England, this could, in turn, boost heights. It may enhance blocking over the North Atlantic. It may allow a trough to develop over eastern North America and indeed over the, 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 the UK as well. Now, warming... In within the Gulf of Alaska is something that, that we don't necessarily want to see either. That may uh, favour uh, Arctic outbreaks in the eastern and central portion of the United States. We've seen that back in 2013-14 where we had one shot of, of, of colder after the other. We had the, the, you know, the polar vortex coming down several times, particularly during the heart of winter 2013-2014. But in turn, these shots of Arctic air coming south over the eastern half of the United States and tropical air coming out of the Caribbean, merging with that cold coming south, enhanced the jet stream, kept the, the, the North Atlantic Oscillation positive or neutral, even though we had a, a negative Arctic Oscillation back during that winter season. And that was a terrific winter for the United States, one of the coldest in many, many years. But we had a super stormy winter across the western portion of the uh, European continent here. So I'm, I'm basically just showing you the different variables and how difficult it can be to pinpoint any uh, given type of weather pattern. But uh, certainly we have got a, a, a very different world to even back in 2011. Now this is the the, the global temperature, uh, you know, for the for the year uh, during uh, 2011. You can see here that the Earth was actually below normal in 2011. Now, if you look at the uh, sea surface temperatures here, so this is 2007, 2008, 2009. Now, notice here that we are seeing that warming taking place here. So, of course, 2007, so the period between 2006 and 2007 was actually quite warm globally, and certainly across the UK. But we actually entered a colder period from about 2009 through 2013 14. And by the way, November 2014, I still believe, if I'm right in saying, is the last time the a monthly average globally was actually below normal. Ever since that, it's been above normal temperature-wise. And if you look at each uh, individual year um, or, or sea surface temperature profile for around this date, each year you see the warming taking place. But it's interesting to see how in 2011, 2012, 2013, while the temperature over Europe was actually quite cold, generally speaking, we were seeing somewhat of a warming taking place here. This was 2013. Then we started to see the uh, Pacific heating up big time. Of course, we had the Super El Nino that went off. Uh, the Pacific um, scene, there's the, the uh, El Nino there. We had a very warm Pacific, but notice that the Atlantic was starting to cool. And that's quite interesting here. And then as we started to see the Pacific cooling once again, 
uh, in 2016-17, in the wake of the Super El Nino, we start to see the Atlantic warming up. Now, this is an interesting one. 2018, of course, this was the year with the beast from the east. But look at the Pacific cool, uh, heating up. As you can see here, we've got this um, area of cold over the North Atlantic uh, to the south of Greenland. Uh, but then as we go uh, into 2019, 2020, 2021, you notice here, uh, that's quite interesting, the cold over the over the North Pacific here. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is where it looked like it was going to be a great year. Now, we don't necessarily have the tripole over the North Atlantic of warm, cold, warm. But look at the Pacific with the cold Gulf of Alaska, warmth to the south of the Aleutians here. We had the La Nina going. That looked as if it was going to produce a great winter, and it simply did not. And of course, this is where we stand at the moment here. Warm northern ocean basins, the La Nina is still going. And folks, really, that could uh, look like quite a warm winter overall. But of course, if you've got um, the Pacific, the EPO, the WPO uh, driving the global pattern, we may end up having a 2009-2010 type winter. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts. And I'm going to continue to look at each individual element, whether it be solar. Solar is another thing, by the way. Uh, I think everything came together perfectly around the 2009-2013 period where we've seen um, a certain ocean profile globally. We had the solar minimum going on. We had the, the El Nino. Everything came together just perfectly, especially around that 2009-10 an 11 period, then we started to see a change taking place. But the global temperature overall was actually below average uh, following that that previous solar minimum. But the oceans, I think that the, the, what I'm trying to get at here is that back during the last solar minimum of 2008-2009, uh, the global temperature uh, was below average. The sea surface temperatures were a lot cooler and now with the, the, the most recent solar minimum, the overall global temperature is much warmer. The ocean temperatures, I think, are driving that warmer than normal uh, planetary um, temperature overall. So, yeah, very, very complex stuff. And it's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a wee bit in terms of, of, of what I'm going to actually put out there. Um, so bear with me. Keep it right here on my channel. I will certainly be looking at all these different elements and aspects as we go forward here. But it certainly is uh, going to be an interesting winter coming up. I think that's for sure. So keep it right here. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think um, with regards to the overall setup. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening. What's left of it. And I'll hopefully again be back tomorrow with more. Bye for now.